you're watching Faith and Reason. A discussion about God, politics, and pop culture. From the perspective of our pastors, who are not afraid to tackle and ask the hard questions. A Christian talk show for those on a spiritual journey. This is Faith and Reason. Good evening. Welcome to Faith and Reason, a show that looks at issues that are going on in today's society in light of the Word of God. I'm Pastor George Crespo from Fort Lee Gospel. And with me, as always, Pastor Rick Spence from Fort, uh, Fort Lee. I'm from, Did I say I'm from Fort Lee Gospel. <laughs> Sorry, I'm from First Bats and Fist Park. I thought I still Pastor had my Rick job. Pastor Rick Spence is uh, from Fort Lee Gospel. Yes. No, no, one job is enough for me. Yes. Um, tonight we want to discuss a very interesting issue, and certainly um, Pastor Rick knows more about this than I do. Uh, lately, there's been a lot of controversy with well, Trump. Has always been been in a lot of controversy. Every, every week, every but week. he's had a big issue going on with uh, Comey and uh, the, the former FBI director. And maybe you can tell us about the conflict and how it has uh, generated and how it has come about. And then tell us the connection between uh, James Comey mm -hmm. and the theologian uh, Reinhold Niebuhr, which okay. is the topic that we want to deal with tonight. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is a, a story I read that captured my interest and got me digging a little bit deeper. But uh, basically, John, James Comey was the, uh, the head of the FBI. Um, the, the story as we know it today, and I'm sure even uh, when some people will view this, uh, will probably develop further, and uh, we're not sure. But, uh, but with Trump, it seems like every week there's, you know, there's five or six different outrageous things that are either said or done. Um, that could be discussed on faith and reason, but they seem to be forgotten the next week. So uh, the Comey story seems to have a little bit more uh, length to it um, in the sense that, uh, that, first of all, Comey was influential in even the election of Trump. Uh, whether you believe that or not is up for debate, but, uh, but he, uh, he brought up the issue of the emails of Hillary Clinton, an investigation quite late in the process, uh, that some argue may have swung the election uh, if at least it had some influence in some circles. Um, and then uh, afterwards, uh, it appears that Trump uh, had a, a number of encounters with James Comey looking for his allegiance, looking for his, uh, you know, his uh, faithfulness to him, and he didn't find that, so Comey was fired. And the language um, and, and the firing was kind of awkward in the sense that uh, that first of all, they said he was fired because of Hillary Clinton's emails and how he handled that. And then Trump said, played out, uh, he was fired because he wouldn't be, um, uh, because he kept looking into the, the Russian connection to the Trump um, uh, campaign. And so, uh, so, you know, Trump got to the core of it after, you know, his, uh, uh, his team had had to defend an alternative uh, idea to it. So, so out of all of that, um, you know, you got, First of all, I didn't know much about James Comey before this election cycle. He was the head of the FBI, but you don't pay much attention to it. Uh, he's actually a Bergen County guy. He was raised in, in our area. But uh, as it turns out, he was, um, you know, he's very much influenced by the theologian Reinhold Niebuhr, and therefore I thought there was a program we could discuss. And what is that influence? Uh, who is Niebuhr? Uh, how does that influence how James Comey was the director of the FBI um, and, uh, and ultimately where that ideology clashed with the Trump administration? Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's a story in all of that and uh, try to unpack that today. Okay. Um, obviously, you know, we all have a different opinion about Comey. I, I personally had no problem with him being fired. I thought he should be fired because I thought it was just uh, outrageous that, uh, you know, when you have the, when you have the FBI agent and, uh, director, and you're seeing him more than you see Oprah. Um, <laughs> something, something's odd there about that. And I thought, yeah, yeah you know what? Okay, no problem removing him. You're right. Uh, Trump's reason for removing him sounds so awkward as to because of this, because of that, whatever. whatever. Um, but now I was curious myself also when, you, when this topic came up. Uh, tell us now who, who is Reinhold Niebuhr and, and what kind of connection does exist between. Uh, James Comey and, and Reinhold Niebuhr. For, tell us a little bit about Reinhold Niebuhr first, yeah, and just yeah. then tell yeah, us uh, yeah. what connection is there. Okay, Reinhold Niebuhr is uh, someone who actually taught at the school you went to, Union Theological Seminary, um, 
he was most active between the two world wars and just post World War II. Uh, he died in uh, 1971, but he'd been retired for about 10 years before he passed. He was born in 1892. Um, Reinhold Niebuhr is uh, is someone who who is uh, from a German tradition, but then uh, he was he was a, a neo uh, orthodox. Um, theologian, and uh, some have argued he was the most influential American theologian uh, since Jonathan Edwards, and, uh, and or arguably as influential a theologian as the 20th century had in America. That's debatable. Uh, he was not a part of my tradition. I'm, you know, I, I was raised, uh, you know, saying that, you know, we're a part of a, a, a conservative tradition, but there's also the liberal tradition, there's also the neo-orthodox tradition. Uh, the liberals say is the Bible you know, contains the Word of God, but it also contains a lot of history that's not not the Word of God or a lot of facts that are not true. The neo-orthodox recaptured some of the truth of the Scripture, uh, with with still having some questions uh, of validity of Scripture, and uh, and of course uh, you know, our tradition says the the Bible is the Word of God. Uh, so so we're talking about a person who is is not formative to my own theology in one sense, but he was influential in America. Um, to, to get into the, the core, and, and, and really I, I'm no expert on him, but the, the core of, of his political influence uh, is over the idea of Christian realism. Uh, he's somebody who was very critical of the social gospel or, um, or of the, the theologians uh, when he started out, basically said the world just needs more love, and he says, "No, no, the, there's a place for justice, and you show love through justice, mm -hmm. and uh, and there is also um, a limit. You know, with power comes the potential for the abuse of power, and power needs to be um, curtailed and influenced, and uh, and so he he ended up going from being a pacifist." to supporting World War II because of the atrocities of, uh, like of Hitler, like and then also <laughs> condemning the Vietnam War. He condemned oh, the Vietnam War. So, he, he was, so he, he was a pragmatist in that. He wasn't uh, you know, committed to pacifism mm -hmm. uh, in such a way that he stayed with it, um, and, and he was influenced by his time. Now, how does Comey then, um, where do we see Comey in this? How, how is he... How has he been influenced by, by this philosophy and his portrayal as the FBI director? Okay. Well, uh, Comey, when he did his uh, master's thesis, he wrote it on uh, Reinhold Niebuhr as compared to Jerry Falwell in 1982. Now, Jerry Falwell's deceased right now, and ironically, um, perhaps one of the most uh, public Christians uh, who have aligned themselves with Donald Trump the closest is the son of Jerry Falwell and Liberty University. Mm -hmm. um, and so there, there's a very strong connection. But, uh, uh, but his uh, thesis asked the question, why should the Christian be involved in politics? And he tried to answer that through Reinhold Niebuhr on the one hand and Jerry Falwell on the other. And he came to, uh, they had very different opinions on multiple issues. Um, Jerry Falwell believed in absolutism, you know, that there is right and there's wrong, there's, uh, there's, uh, we need to take sides, we need to stand up for righteousness, um, whereas Niebuhr was somebody who, uh, who said, you know, even pursuing righteousness uh, can lead to self-righteousness and abuse of power. So he, he was more nuanced in the understanding of it. There's more ambiguities in terms of uh, a, a politically engaged Christian willing to seek power and accept compromise and risk cynicism uh, sir, as you pursue justice. Mm -hmm. um, because, uh, and that was the Niebuhr's. And obviously, um, uh, Comey very much sided with Niebuhr over Falwell. And in some ways, uh, Trump is an expression of, uh, of Jerry Falwell's mentality lived out. And many people who, who believe in that sense of, of justice and, and right and wrong and, and uh, uh, have become supporters of Trump uh, it with, uh, in, in the sense of, of uh, following that sort of black and white, that world of black and white. There's good guys, bad guys. There's, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's evil in this world and there's corruption. You know, I, I I don't know if I'll make the connection between Trump and Falwell <clears throat> because 
Paul Wall is a man who lived his whole life that way, and I don't see Trump as being a man who's lived well, his whole life that way. I think right. he's been a man who's gone with the flow, you know, no offense well, to our president. Uh, <laughs> he, he's not a very moral yeah, <laughs> character gone, in one sense. He's gone yes, I get with that. the flow of history. Whatever flow, wherever the flow of history goes, he goes with it. So he can be an entertainer as well as this, as well as that. You know, Falwell always stayed the course as to what he believed, whether we agreed with mm -hmm. him or not. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, don't, I don't see... Trump has no, 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 okay. Uh, so, uh, so may, maybe, maybe I misspoke, and, and let me just try to clarify that. Um, many of the supporters and and uh, the evangelical, mm -hmm. the white evangelical in America, uh, voted for Donald Trump, uh, eighty percent to twenty percent for Hillary Clinton in the last election. Uh, so, so the the idea of seeing the world as black and white, as a moral uh, battle, the 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 battle between um, you know, the good of the West versus the, the evil of uh, Islamic uh, terrorism, as an example. Uh, that view is, is perceived and, and very much um, what, what drew many evangelicals to be supporters of Trump. Mm -hmm. So to say Trump is a Jerry Fallon, no, he's not. But what I'm saying is that uh, the mentality, the political philosophy of Jerry Falwell is, is a way to understand the rise and the expression of power of Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. I thought it was, a little, I think it was a interesting thesis he wrote, but again, I think a little unfair because Reinhold Niebuhr is not the same kind of caliber as uh, Falwell. Reinhold Niebuhr is a professional theologian. Right. I mean, this is, he's a man of the mind, not a man of, uh, of uh, running a university or things like that. So Falwell was, uh, couldn't, couldn't, yeah, again, if you're going to compare one theologian with another, it's well, okay, but when you're when you're taking like a preacher and a theologian, mm -hmm. it's going to be but, but it's going to be a, a real imbalance because the the, the theologian has the luxury mm -hmm. of being in a classroom <clears throat> and having this kind of freedom that I think uh, a minister would not have or a guy directing a university does not have. Mm -hmm. So again, I don't think Falwell has the ever had the intellectual capacity of a Niebuhr to even qualify against them. Well, so, okay, I mean, on on one point, you're right. I think. I think the, the validity of the thesis itself is that Jerry Falwell in 1982 was a very prominent uh, present day um, spokesperson for the moral majority and mobilizing um, the, the conservative uh, evangelical church that had been unengaged politically prior to his rise. And, and, and he, was, um, he, he was a great influence. Uh, and again, the question is, why should the Christian be involved in politics? And Jerry Falwell answered that question in a certain way. And uh, he said, you know, the very concept, the moral majority says, there's all these moral Christian people throughout the nation who are mm -hmm. silent, on, silent on political issues. Therefore, uh, they need to speak up and they need to be mobilized. They need to vote. They need to be active in po the political world. Um, and by the same token, the theologian, uh, Reinhold Niebuhr, who was deceased at that point, uh, he had given a similar answer to why Christians should be engaged, and, and yet they had uh, different reasons. So that was the validity of the... So, so Comey, you're, so you're saying Comey would be more, um, so greater ambiguity so far as um, uh, right and wrong and black and white. and Yes. So he wouldn't necess necessarily see the... American government has always been right, always being good. Well, he very much was committed to the idea is if you give a person too much power, they'll abuse the power. And so, he, and, and if, if you want to, uh, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, but, but to understand his response to Hillary Clinton and his response to Donald Trump, uh, the common thread is that, that he was checking their powers uh, in many respects. Okay. Well, we're going to take a small break, and when we come back, we're going to tap into that. Okay. Welcome back to Faith and Reason. You saw a clipping there for Lake Gospel. And certainly, if you're in the area, we invite you to go out and worship with our brother and his church. Uh, if you're near our place, uh, we're at uh, First Baptist Church. We're located at 777 Anderson Avenue in Cliffside Park. If you're near us, you can come worship with us. Uh, during the summer, we only have a worship, worship service at 11 a.m., no Sunday school. And uh, Wednesday night, we do have a prayer meeting at 7.30 p.m. where we're studying Paul's letter to, to Romans. You can go to Facebook and like us there, and you'll see all the sermons, all the, all the Bible studies, as well as uh, Faith and Reason. Uh, so we invite you to go check that out. 
Uh, we've been looking at this interesting topic of, uh, of the controversy between Donald Trump and, um, and James Comey and trying to get an insight as to Comey's mentality and philosophy as how he approached his job and how he, how he, does his, he did his job as director of FBI. And certainly we've seen that uh, one of the major influences of his thinking is a, a theologian named Reinhold Niebuhr. Um, and people are not very well acquainted with him. That We thank Rick for telling us a little bit about him. But one thing that people know about him mm -hmm. and don't know about him mm -hmm. is that he wrote the Serenity Prayer. Right. And uh, if you can just share with us about the Serenity Prayer and actually read it to us so you can see how. It's actually a very beautiful prayer. So I, I thought it was just a few lines, but I learned mm -hmm. that it was a, a very extensive prayer. Yeah. Well, well um, Serenity Prayer is fairly broadly known, but it's especially well known in the 12-step movement. Uh, they use it all the time. Uh, people will be familiar with the beginning. I'll read that first and then, and then continue on to the rest of the prayer. It says, God grant me serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Uh, that's said frequently and known broadly. Um, but he goes on, the prayer continues, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. And um, again, it's, uh, I actually have it posted in my office, uh, the full version of the Serenity Prayer. I, I think it's a beautiful prayer. Um, and even preparing for this program, I learned a little bit more about the, the author of it. Mm -hmm. um, and another little, little note before we get back into the current uh, political issues that are going on um, is that not only was Reinhold Niebuhr um, quite well known as a theologian, but his brother Richard was also a well-known theologian. Reinhold uh, taught at Union Theological Sem Seminary in New York City. Uh, Richard was at uh, Yale Divinity School and he taught there. Um, and, and Richard's well-known, I, I think the best-known book is Christ and Culture, which, uh, uh, which is a very influential book about how uh, we as people of faith are to connect with our culture. Um, and uh, uh, that's not what the program's about, but that's a little yeah, tidbit. If, if uh, we were doing Richard, then I could talk more <laughs> you could go because more. <laughs> I've read a number of his books. Yes. And especially Christ and Culture, which is a must-reading, must-reading for all Christians. But and I read that. A little too, plug yes. there. Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. But, uh, okay, let's, let's, let's get, go further into this topic then. Um, my questions then will be uh, pertaining to both um, Hillary and, and to Trump. The first question is, how does Niebuhr's influence over Comey explain his response to candidate Hillary Clinton? Okay. Um, it, it seems, and, and again, th this is it's a little bit hard to know 100% what's in the mind of James Comey, but, um, but certainly um, as the election was going on, there was an investigation to emails, there was an, a new batch of emails that they looked into, and then people were kind of dumbfounded when James Comey came out with this statement saying, uh, there's no reason to pursue this in a criminal level, but still he reprimanded Hillary Clinton for the abuse of of how she handled her emails and the mm -hmm. way she exposed those, um, you know, the, what was located in the emails to potential abuse and and um, and so I, so it seems that uh, that one way to understand it is that Comey was is very committed to the idea that uh, that people with a lot of power and in this case Hillary Clinton at that point myself and 90 percent of America believed that she would be the next president who thought. Donald Trump would win. I, obviously, some people did, and uh, <laughs> I'm not saying who voted for him because I think most people who voted for him kind of questioned whether or not he would even make it. And yeah, obviously, he's my president today, and and we live with that. Um, but at the same time, it was the the idea was uh, was that I I believe that Comey saw in in, in Hillary just kind of a. A, a loose and free use of power and an abuse of power and, a, and uh, you know, being too free as she was about to, in his mind, to become, you know, the next uh, most powerful woman on the planet, arguably. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, and so out of that there was um, there was a reprimand there was a there was a moral outrage in in, in a sense and um, and and ironically and, and to answer the, the question another way uh, there's a there's a deep irony in the fact that that Comey and by the way he used Reinhold Niebuhr many people believe this he used Reinhold Niebuhr's name as his Twitter account mm -hmm. so the and he wrote uh, multiple things about the FBI investigation under the name Reinhold Niebuhr um, until that was discontinued um, but again I don't think FBI directors should have a Twitter account <laughs> neither should the president we're not, but we're that's not too, we're not I know I hear you president doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I can't argue with oh, that. Man. I can't say that you're wrong on that point. If you want to be this, you cannot have this. <laughs> no president should be doing Twitter. No FBI director. It's like that's right. That, maybe no, Lord. they should oh, write man. that into the Constitution. Seriously. A new amendment oh, uh, moving forward. Um, yeah, there, there's there's a real there's an ironic twist in this whole story, and that is that uh, that Niebuhr was. Uh, was in serious conflict with J. Edgar Hoover, the director of the FBI, in his day. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the issues was that uh, Niebuhr was a part of a, a clergy group that was opposing um, the Vietnam War. And, um, and the, one of the persons that he was, uh, that he was you know, shared with um, a, another, uh, a, another Daniel Bernigan, who was a Jesuit priest, Daniel Bernigan was a co-founder of this clergy group that opposed the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. um, the FBI director actually uh, charged um, charged uh, Daniel Bernigan with a crime. He spent three years in prison as a result of uh, meddling. Uh, uh, and, and in addition, J. Edgar Hoover is quite famous for investigating um, Martin Luther King Jr. and uh, and monitoring his movement and things like this and 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 even in the FBI now um, James Comey uh, part of the training of new recruits for the FBI is to look at J. Edgar Hoover as an example of abuse of power uh, for the FBI director which makes it very ironic that now some people are comparing Comey to J. Edgar Hoover as a, as someone who is um, the best known FBI director since uh, since Hoover uh, was doing his thing in the 60s so mm -hmm. it's a uh, it's a very it's a very fascinating connecting point and um, you know I, I don't know if uh, if Comey's exposure of, uh, of Hillary in any way uh, how much it influenced the election I just thought it was inappropriate I just mm -hmm. I just thought it was very weird yes no yes not I me mean, like it's almost like the man couldn't make up his mind whether she should be investigated or not but I think that that's something you settle before you come out and do anything. Right. And I felt he was being uh, premature in coming out and saying things and then having to backtrack. And I think it looks horrible, especially when you're, when you're in America, that you're doing something like that. But, um, yeah, in, in some ways I'm sure it did influence some people to, that were uncertain. Mm -hmm. As to Hillary winning, I was not certain that she would win. I, <laughs> I can stand for the record that you're, I said if anybody you're. could beat her of the candidates that were running, uh -huh. The only one I thought could beat her was Trump, okay. because I think he had struck a nerve uh, in America mm -hmm. uh, with what the things he was saying, and the mm -hmm. other candidates could not do that, right. and Hillary could not could not do that. And she's she's definitely not doesn't have the same charisma as uh, as her husband or as Obama. So right, right. I don't think she could resonate with the people. But right. let's look at the other. We have about five minutes left, so let's look at uh, how does Niebuhr's influence over Comey explain his response to uh, President Trump? Well. I, again, I, I mentioned J. Edgar Hoover as as someone who um, used his influence um, uh, to to investigate uh, different aspects of of culture and, and arguably to abuse his power to uh, to political ends. Um, one of the things about Comey is that that he is very committed to the independence of of the um, the police force. One one of the training. Uh, examples they give for the new recruits for the FBI is how uh, law enforcement was in cahoots with the uh, Hitler regime and so uh, so in his mind you need uh, Hitler would not rise up if law enforcement did its job uh, that's that's his mentality so from and again I, I, I want to qualify the next statement by saying 
from what's being reported at this time, which could be changed in the future. Truth could come out a little bit different than what it is now. But it's being reported that, mm -hmm. uh, that on three different occasions, you have uh, Donald Trump trying to bring Comey into his inner circle, mm -hmm. uh, make him somebody who can do his bidding, someone he can be close to. And by every uh, indication, uh, Comey was keeping his distance and, and not wanting a close relationship. And, and that's what one of his convictions is that uh, he didn't want to be friends with Obama. He didn't want to be friends with President Trump either uh, from the sense of, of that would hinder his ability to do his job. Yeah, he was committed to the 10-year uh, term, and that's why the FBI director is given a long term, because they're supposed to be non-political. Um, and, and arguably, uh, at this point, um, you know, this seems like something that could lead to um, you know, possible impeachment, possible difficulties for Trump uh, as the story comes out. Now, we don't know what the full story is, but if, if you have a, a president who is uh, trying to stop an investigation into the, the Russians. And just before Comey was fired, he asked for more resources to look into uh, the, the Trump uh, connection with the Russians uh, mm -hmm. in the election cycle. So, um, so th these are very serious things. And, and again, um, you know, I'm, I'm committed to the truth coming out. And, uh, and so I just found the, the story very fascinating about Comey. Yeah, again, I think I'm more of the opinion that um there should be more privacy to these things. And again, I'm, I'm pretty uh, amazed that um, all the laundry's put out. I, I guess that's the American mindset that everything should be out there. And I don't think everything should be out there. Mm -hmm. I think there are things that, are, that should be kept to, uh, to the leadership of, of the nation. Uh, nothing scandalous, of course. Nothing that, of course, if he's done something uh, horrendously illegal. But I think Comey will have, unfortunately, nothing to... Unless you, unless you have a videotape or something. I mean, really, yeah. it, it's, again, and, you, and since he has been a man who's fluctuated... I think it's going to be very difficult for him to win the day. Uh, well, I, the real question is, is what is going to come of uh, the connection to Russia uh, mm -hmm. between the inner circle of, uh, of the Trump administration? And, um, and, and again, I don't have the answer to that. Um, and Comey, by all indication, hadn't formulated an answer to that, mm -hmm. that question. He was investigating it. And, uh, and by his firing, I think it gave... Um, it gave more of an impetus to those uh, to pursue the truth and, and to, to get to the bottom of that question. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really uh, where we're headed in the, in the months ahead. And it could take even years. I, it, who knows? Yeah. These things move slowly. But, yeah, they, uh, do. they do. Well, we hope that you have enjoyed our show and certainly a very intriguing conversation and uh, intriguing uh, connections between uh, Comey and his connections with uh, Reinhold Niebert. We hope you continue to pursue them and just uh, keep growing in your faith. God bless you. Thank you for watching Faith and Reason. Please join us again next week. We invite you to visit our pastors at one of their churches, Pastor Rick Spence at Fort Lee Gospel Church, or Pastor George Crespo at the First Baptist Church in Cliffside Park. Check out our websites for more information.